When building the tallest and most powerful spacecraft in the world, most people will be so consumed that every other thing can wait. But that is not the kind of person Elon Musk is. On the other hand, he has been thinking of even more than one next version of Starship. Let's find out what he has in store for the next generation rocket in today's episode of Alpha Tech. With the hectic pace of work on SpaceX's Starship, it seems that if you blink, you'll miss a lot. Firstly, while attention has been on prototypes S24 and B7, SpaceX is also charging ahead with Starship 2.0. According to Musk, a theoretical next next generation SpaceX rocket to potentially follow some years after Starship and Super Heavy could be a full 18 meter wide, which is twice the diameter of its predecessor. Add in a doubling of height and a theoretical Starship 2.0 would have eight times the surface area and eight times the propellant tank volume, requiring roughly eight times as much thrust and making the vehicle eight times as heavy as Starship 1. Assuming that the Starship successor retains its fineness ratio of height and width, an unlikely end result but still interesting to ponder nonetheless, the vehicle would measure around 18 meters in diameter and a terrifying height of around 236 meters, which is more than twice as tall as the Saturn V. That's as tall as the Woolworth Building in New York, or three quarters of the height of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. An 18 meter diameter would also make it the widest rocket ever built, with Saturn V's S IC first stage measuring 10 meters wide and the Soviet Union's N1 Block A first stage measuring an impressive 17 meters in diameter at its widest point. A very rough estimate would peg Starship 2.0's gross fueled mass at a gobsmacking 40,000 metric tons. The upgrade for the Starship 2.0 might be able to launch over a thousand tons per launch, meaning that a Starship version 2 would have the payload diameter and cargo capacity to launch a complete satellite Orion. The parts for a 4,000 ton interplanetary Orion could be placed into orbit with about four launches. The massive payload of a future Generation 2 SpaceX Starship could also launch factories and advanced production systems to the moon. Creating the production systems for nuclear pulse propulsion on the moon would remove concerns about nuclear radiation from a ground-launched Project Orion. Creating a nuclear pulse propulsion capability would enable manned interplanetary, manned gravitational lens range missions, and manned interstellar missions. Importantly, Musk will be able to attain his Mars targets faster with this larger and more powerful Starship. The capacity to lift more goods per trip will make delivering the supplies needed by the colonizers faster by reducing the number of trips required. The number of passengers every batch on Starship 2.0 will also grow. The current Starship passenger capacity is estimated to be 100. However, Starship 2.0 could have a passenger capacity of up to 1,000 reducing the duration of the waiting list for interested voyagers. The time it takes to travel will be decreased, allowing Musk's passengers to reach Mars sooner than expected. This will undoubtedly make the journey less tedious. Starship now is relying on its Raptor engines. SpaceX will use 33 Raptor 2 engines to power the Super Heavy first stage and 6 on the Starship upper stages for initial test flights. If SpaceX would use the current generation of Raptors to power such a colossal rocket, the booster would need a bare minimum of over 100 Raptors just to lift off at all. Musk also pointed out via Twitter that Raptor 2 has significant improvements in every way, but a complete design overhaul is necessary for the engine that can actually make life multiplanetary. It won't be called Raptor. In other words, SpaceX will launch an engine that is superior to anything before in the future. This engine will be a big step for SpaceX to come close to its ultimate goal, making humans into multiplanetary species. It's exciting to think about what this ship could do if it is successful. It can be anything you can imagine. However, we all know that designing is not hard, the making of it is hard. So, at this point, SpaceX is gradually developing Starship with a naked S-26. Aside from a range of smaller design changes, Ship 26 has three main differences relative to most prior Starships. First, it has zero heat shield tiles. 
Ship 26 also has no flaps. Starships need flaps to steer and orient themselves during orbital re-entries. They also need flaps to control themselves during exotic landing maneuvers, which require ships to free fall belly down and aggressively flip into a vertical orientation for propulsive landings. But what's more confusing is that Ship 26 has no payload bay of any kind. The end result is a smooth, featureless starship that looks like a steel bullet that can't return to Earth and can't deploy satellites. In the end, the fact that it exists at all almost seems like an elaborate multi-month mistake, but SpaceX clearly intended to build Ship 26 and is now preparing to qualify it for flight. In simpler terms, Ship 26 is an intentionally expendable starship with no way to launch satellites, which raises the obvious question, why does it exist? Based on low-resolution renders, the bullet-like depot ship is the most reminiscent of Ship 26. However, there's no evidence that Ship 26 has exterior optical properties or optimized for long-duration propellant storage. The prototype also lacks any of the hardware likely needed for docking or propellant transfer and has propellant tanks that are the same size as past ships. To survive in orbit for days or weeks, it would need some kind of power source, which is typically solar arrays, that isn't present. And even if an expendable starship like S-26 can already achieve SpaceX's reported target of 250 tons to low Earth orbit, 250 tons is only a fifth of a full propellant load. It has been said that Ship 26 could also be used for miscellaneous systems testing or a longevity demonstration in orbit. However, it's unclear why SpaceX couldn't simply do that with Ship 24 and 25. Both have had their payload bays permanently sealed, meaning that they are only useful as test articles. Ship 26 could exist primarily to demonstrate that a starship with no flaps or heat shield tiles is aerodynamically stable during launch. However, expending an entire starship for what amounts to wind tunnel testing would be extravagant. Finally, a variant that is sure to be launched soon is the Starship HLS. Lisa Watson Morgan, manager of the Human Landing System, which is the HLS part, program in a presentation at the annual meeting of NASA's Lunar Exploration Analysis Group, or LEAG, or LEAG, said SpaceX has been a fantastic partner on HLS so far, with close cooperation between the company and the agency. That includes one of the unique attributes of Starship, the elevator required to go from the crew cabin to the surface. It's a very tall lander. It doesn't look like the traditional landers that we've all seen in the past, so it can be hard to reconcile that mentally, Watson Morgan said. She assured scientists at the meeting that the elevator design was robust, saying it was multi-fault tolerant and designed for operating in lunar conditions. In his presentation, Kennedy showed images of a full-scale mock-up of the elevator that SpaceX built for crew-in-the-loop tests, including ones where astronauts wore simulated spacesuits to test the ability to get in and out of the elevator. In short, the Starship will soon take off into orbit and then there will be a lot of great things behind it. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality episodes. And for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.